What's up YouTube? It's your boy, The Crow Show. In today's video, I'm going to break down some of my thoughts while I was playing this game as Slinger. Walk you through some of the choices I made, the decisions, etc. I feel like Dead by Daylight is a game of choices. Uh, the fewer bad choices you make, the more likely you are to quote unquote win. So let's break it down. Okay, so after landing my first hit on this gamer, I know a few things already. They do not have Sprint Burst or Life. When I first started Chase, I would have gotten more distance if they had Sprint Burst, and when they vaulted through the window, they didn't have Life, Speed, or Distance. I didn't play a real big mind game at the window. I wanted to check if they were checking their check spot, and check out this frame right here. Bam. They're checking to make sure that I run past the window or around the corner before making their next move. So that tells me that they know what to look for rather than mindlessly run across the window and I can land an easy spear shot. Remember my mind game from earlier in the chase about 10 seconds ago? This time I decided just to take a blind shot through the window, hopefully timing it just right so I could get her. It worked out. Also, that first generator popped really fast, so that tells me it was likely three people on that generator, so I've got a choice to make. Do I go for a pain res hook or just a regular hook? In this case, I went for a regular hook because I don't want to use pain res just yet, because if there is somebody else on a generator out there, it doesn't have a lot of progress. So I make the educated guess just to put her on a regular hook. So on the regular hook she goes, and I go to main building, break this door, and I see the sable running by and it takes takes me to this corner gen which i think was the one the other person was working on so the first gen likely fixed by two people and this one was worked on by the person who probably got the hook save i think she actually 99 or sprint burst there i didn't catch that in game but i zone her in there because if i break the break the pallet on the other side she has an easy escape to the next tile lands a nice and easy spear shot there I continue my chase. That was a little bit aggressive on my part, I'll admit. And I see the Steve out of the corner of my eye. We get an enemy block on the window. So I decide to switch targets. Making a mental note, Steve has sprint burst and also he didn't look behind him while running away, indicating to me he might be a weak runner and is probably a good person to target. And sadly, this turned out to be true. The Steve was not a really great runner. And that's what I'm trying to keep in mind every time I chase one of these people. Which one is a good runner? The second Sable I ran into, because she was moving so quickly and was very sneaky at the window, that indicates to me she's a good runner. So I've got to maybe be a little bit careful. And that's why it was easy for me to switch targets to the Steve. And I got a really quick and easy down on him and got my first pain rats hook. Now this Kate took me on a bit of a journey uh, using this pallet. She pre-drops it there. Uh, that's probably the right call. Now it would not be the best thing for me just to break it right away. So I could cut this down to make myself look better, but I do want to keep in the good and the bad while I'm chasing. So I swing here and I miss. I should have started my swing a little bit earlier, probably would have landed it, uh, but she gets caught there, I believe finally land the hit on her and she just kind of runs in a straight line. I decided to take the Hail Mary shot. We land it, Kate goes down. I look for where we get jolt value and then I go for my next pain res hook. I decided to go check on this generator because I saw this was the one that blew up. I did a quick patrol to see if anybody was nearby and I knew I had to look around. <laughs> I run into the Steve again Sadly, it wasn't really like, as you can see, I'm not running aura perks on this build. But I know Steve is a weak target, so I just stay on Steve. They've only fixed one generator, but they've got a lot of progress on that one in the corner. Uh, some of them have gone unchecked for a period of time. So I felt comfortable getting some additional pressure down in the Steve the second time. Now, unfortunately, we did accidentally cut the part where I put him on his second hook. There goes the second generator. And so we run into the Steve again, who's on his third, uh, he's on death hook. So at this point, I'm like, well, I'm a killer. I got to kill. I got to do my objective. 
I decide to put them on this corner hook. I know it's a pain res hook, it's gonna go away, but there's no generators over there for me to patrol. So I feel comfortable getting rid of it. So I do a quick patrol and I run into these two gamers over here and I decide to take a kind of a crazy shot on the Kate there. She runs away, but I want to keep the pressure on and get multiple people injured. So I know there's a Sable over here. It's just a question of where and which one. And I'm running monitor and abuse. And I think that really does mess with people while, while you're chasing them down. It's really hard for them to gauge exactly where you are. So I'm trying to keep in mind, I've got to keep her zoned in this corner. I, I can't let it, I can't let the Sable make an easy escape. So I keep her in this corner, land a hit, I get jolt value there. Jolt did a lot of work for me in this trial. I've got two stacks of pain resonance left, so I decide to put her on a hook, and that corner gen gets, gets fixed. Break that pallet just in case, because I know that corner is a bit hot. I need to reduce as many obstacles as I can. I went in and patrolled that area where the generator got fixed. And it's at this point, some of you may disagree with my choice. I decided to proxy camp at this point. I can maintain eyes on multiple generators and maybe even secure the kill. I saw that crow flying up there, so I decided to go have a quick look and didn't see anybody. And I made a really big mistake. I, I walked away, she gets hook saved at the last second, and for some reason, she just decides to throw the game. I don't know why this is happening. If she kept playing, these gamers might have had a better chance at staying in the game, maybe even escaping. So we're down to two people left. The trial is essentially over. I see the Sable over there in the corner. I decide, okay, I'm gonna chase her. We end up over at Killer Shack, where again, I decide to take another Hail Mary shot. It lands, I get a hit on her. I chase her through Shack Pallet, we break the Shack Pallet, that's out of the way. We continue our pursuit. We let her zigzag a little bit, we close some distance, land that final hit, and it's time to put her on a hook. And that was our fi final Pain Resonance hook. So I go up my trusty little hill here, and I don't know where the last person is, Kate. Trying to keep an eye out, and let's see if you can spot where she is. I'll give you just a second. Keep your eyes out, homies. Trust me, you, you do get a glimpse of where she's at. You see that? Let's zoom in. The crow, right over there. She disturbed a crow, so I decide to run over there. Sure enough, she's over here. We land our final shot on the Kate. And this trial's over. I had a lot of fun in this trial. We hit some nice shots, and I think we made some really nice choices. We got the Steve out early, and for some reason that one Sable ended her trial early. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what's going through a killer's head while they're playing, some of the choices we make, and how we gather the data while we're playing this game. I think that's about 90% of Dead by Daylight. Gathering data, making informed decisions, using that information all on the fly in real time. And that's part of the reason why I love this game. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and I hope to see you in the next one.